So a lot of people don't realize that um, in EVs, a lot of times they will use the high voltage system to drive some of the environmental controls because it needs so much more cooling power. And so he's like, oh yeah, I think I see the water heater. And somebody actually asked, well, that's metal, right? And then they knocked and it was plastic. <laughs> and we were like, no, <laughs> like this can't, because a high voltage system, everything's housed in metal and you've got point to point shielding, like a continuous shield until you hit this plastic box. <laughs> And it was painted black, so like everyone just assumed it was metal until somebody knocked on it and just had that hollow plastic sound, right, and we right. were like, our hearts just like sank. We were like, no, and it even looked like it had a ground point on it oh, wow. that wasn't actually connected to anything. <laughs> so we found the problem. <laughs> yeah, you found the problem. Um, and I, I, I will say that once we finally pinned down that, yes, that was the problem, and basically... Uh, because you had this long, unterminated cable shield, so the cable shield had picked up noise from the converters, the big high-voltage converters, and that's very, very common. It's really hard to completely avoid having that noise on your shields. But the main way you control that is by having shields that are very well terminated. Um, so you've got what is the closest you can get to to a complete Faraday cage around your high-voltage system. Uh, but when one end of that Faraday cage is just wide open, <laughs> connected to absolutely nothing conductive, uh, yeah, that's, that's not going to work quite so well. <laughs> the terrifying thing about mm. that particular case was that if you turned on the water heater, mm -hmm. the problem went away. Oh, jeez. Which means that somehow the noise that was on that cable, when the water heater circuitry was activated, still found a path back to chassis ground. Wow. And we were like, 